Congrats to Missouri. I thought they, um, you know, they were they are a well coached team. Dennis had his team really ready to play. Um, I thought they played hard throughout. Uh, we knew coming in their style is a little bit chaotic. It's different, uh, <clears throat> and I thought they did a great job of executing. You know, they changed their starting lineup. Uh, I think to maybe be a little bit better defensively. Um, and they got off to a great start. And, you know, I thought we we were ready to play. We played well early. Um, I think in the first 12 minutes, we were up six points. And I think they had 17 points. So we had done a really, really good job. But the last 741 of the first half, they scored 21 points and were plus seven on the boards. And I thought that's where the game changed. Um, I thought we got great looks. It was just one of those nights where we couldn't make a shot. And for the first time this season, we allowed that to impact the game. We allowed it to impact the defense. We allowed it to impact everything. And so it's a learning lesson for us. You hate to do it in a loss, uh, but we'll learn from it. We'll get better from it, and uh, we'll be ready for the next one. The offense always becomes better with defense. We get in transition, then a lot of times, you know, especially for us, the offense starts to get going. So that would be a good way to do it. As an older guy on the team, how, how can you help guide these younger guards through the struggles they kind of face when they're getting a little bit more pressure? They're not struggling. They're learning. They're learning. So it is, I mean, is I, I, they're, they're better than me at handling the ball, let me tell you that. So, um, they're going to be fine. They're just going to get these learning lessons and they're going to become the better um, freshmen in the um, conference. What kind of things are you saying or doing to help them when you know teams are putting up concerted effort at the top of the key to put pressure on them? Tell them next play because I already know that, they're, that every time something goes wrong for them, that's going to make them better the next play. And it's just something – they're 18, so that's what it is. Good. Get them now because they're, gonna, they're getting better every time. No, we. I mean, no, we just running offense, running offense. That's all it is. Like you guys have played two SEC teams, a Pac-12 team. How did those experiences get you ready for a game like Sunday when you have to face Clemson and, and get ready for a game that's going to be high intense like that? I love I love what it's doing for our preparation. I think it's going to have us prepare prepare very well. All right, thank you. <clears throat> fell apart against Florida, and even in the mid-major games, that's where you guys kind of hit a wall. What do you think the reason behind that is? It's a great question, and you're absolutely right. Um, we have to be able to concentrate and focus, you know, the entire time we're out there. We, we've had a tendency where we've had leads, and then I don't think it's a conscious effort of, or conscious thought, I should say, of guys thinking well, we can take a break. I just think it's human nature in learning to be tougher in those situations. I don't. I mean, we had some wide open looks. I thought in the first half we had some looks where we shot fake and we should have driven it. And instead we took a slide dribble three. I can think of off the top of my head at least three or four of those. And we talked coming into this game for the past two, three days about second penetration. We knew that they would react to shot fakes uh, because of our shooting. And those were the ones that I thought we should have punched it and either got into a spot or maybe we create another opportunity. We didn't do that. But I thought in the second half, we had some wide open shots that we normally make. We missed them. And it affected us. It's the first time all year that it's really done that. Like, it really affected how we locked in defensively. And, again, that's a learning thing for us. How do you stop that from bleeding over? 
Yeah, we have to learn from it. That's it. We have to teach it. We have to do a better job teaching it. We have to do a better job of, I have to do a better job of making sure we're prepared and all of those things, and we'll get better. There's a lot of times that they would press Bob and he would kind of you know, get a screen up top, but coming off it, it seemed like he put his head down and he kind of try to make a play on his own. It, uh, what, do you guys, what do you guys do to try to help him and, and Jalen and Ishika, because they did to him too, all kind of try to find their way through those things? Yeah, well, again, we have to learn and get better. We have to go back and watch it. And, uh, you know, again, their style is very different. You know, they'll switch a lot. And at times today when we did drive, they didn't rotate as much. They stayed connected. And so they played they, – they, they made you play a little bit of one-on-one against their size. But, again, I thought we, for the most part, generated good shots – we didn't make some good decisions, you know, where we had 11 turnovers. So we have to be better there. Um, we thought coming in, if we had 10 or less, we would be in a great position. 11's not bad, but man, when you can't make a shot, I think we went an eight minute stretch where we couldn't make a shot. And there were some, a lot during that time that were naked, like they were wide open. And, um, so, again, that's just how it goes sometimes. Jeff, just coming into this one, did you imagine that this would be the first team to out-rebound you guys <laughs> looking at what they had done prior to this? No, I didn't. I didn't. But I knew that they were going to play really hard. I knew that they were going to fight. I knew that they were going to do that. Uh, but I thought that's where we could have an advantage, but we didn't. Jeff, they sent you to the line 31 times tonight. How did you assess your team's physicality? Our physicality was okay. I mean, when you get to the line 31 times, that's a pretty good thing. We knew coming in that we would get there a lot uh, because of the way they play. Um, and we made 25. Now we missed some key front ends of one and ones um, that would have maybe kept it a little bit closer during that stretch. We have to be better in those moments. You feel like you guys could have defended the rim better today? I feel like we could have done a lot of things better today. That's one of them. Um, you know, again, I thought we allowed our inability to make a shot. I thought we allowed that to affect our defense. First time all year in our last game against Oregon State, we didn't shoot the ball well, but it didn't affect what we did defensively. Um, today, I thought it did. We were just trying to get spacing. You know, Guillermo's a guy that can make a shot. Um, we weren't really getting anything at the rim with Fetty, um, and also just, you know, the fear of fouling and him getting to the line. You know, that's – that's you know, we struggled there a little bit with him today. Um, but Guillermo can stretch the floor. He can make a shot. They had uh, Vanover in, seven foot five guys, so we thought if we got some penetration, if G is in, at least maybe he takes Vanover away or if Vanover's in there, we kick it to him and perhaps he can make a shot. Just practice it. I mean, that's really it. Um, but it wasn't like we weren't practicing it earlier. We, we just made shots. I mean, we shoot the ball every day. We, we, we normally shoot the ball better from the floor. Today was just one of those days that we didn't. Jeff, I know last year you or talked about the loss to Michigan and VCU, and last year's scope was turning points for your team. When you look at a game like today and then what happened against Florida last week, could that same theory apply with Clemson coming up, West Virginia coming up? Yeah, I mean, look, we have to get better. You know, we'll have some time to prepare for Clemson. They're really good. I thought, you know, before the season, in, in the off season, I thought they would be one of the better teams in our league. Um, with with what they have back, who they added, I, I think they're a really, really good basketball team, and I know they'll be ready to play. They're a very physical team. Um, they're a very experienced team. They're an older team. They're very good defensively. They have one of the best players in the country and P.J. Hall. Uh, but, you know, we'll be ready. We'll be excited. We'll be anxious. You know, we'll have, you know, almost a week, few days, you know, what is it, four or five days to prepare, and we'll be ready Sunday afternoon. If you're playing a bunch of uh, power conference teams in a row here, how is Bob handling that on the job training? He's handling well. He's learning. I mean, we knew that this would be a learning experience for him. You've called this loss a learning experience. Blake has as well. 
What have you seen from the young guys, Bub and Jalen, and even the sophomores, that indicates that they're taking these as learning experiences and not, you know, getting too down about these losses? Well, we should be down about it. We we should be down. I want us to be down, but that can't last. You know, when we get back together, we've moved on. You know, we flush it, win or lose, you know, the next day. You know, you live with it. You learn from it. When we get back together, we'll have some film. We'll talk to them collectively as a group. We'll talk to them individually, and we'll get better. I mean, what's the alternative? You know what I mean? Like, you have to – you know, the biggest thing is that we have to stay together. We can't point fingers. I was pleased after Florida we didn't do that. And we got off the mat and we played really, really well, especially defensively against Oregon State. I anticipate us getting off the mat again and playing well on Sunday. All right, see you guys.